Welcome everyone. We're going to get started in just a moment. I see some more people joining us. So hang tight and we'll get things kicked off in just a bit. Hi everyone, if you're just joining, thanks for being with us. We're gonna get started in just a moment. In the meantime, if you can add in chat where you're joining us from and what's your superpower. So I'll give you an example. My name's Nicole, I'm joining from Oakland, California and my superpower is resiliency. So go ahead, share yours in the chat and you'll find that in your Zoom menu bar. We're gonna go over some other Zoom features in just a bit, but let's start there. Got Douglas from New York City, really good vision. Got Molly from Lafayette, her superpower is multitasking. I know that story, whoop. Um, we've got Christian from Green Bay, donuts. Donuts, I will, yes, donuts is a very important super, I hope baking them, because um, that is a wonderful gift. We have Sandy from Laguna Beach, and she says hers is listening. Gonna keep reading these and if you're just joining us we're gonna get started on today's content with asana momentarily but right now we're just sharing where we're tuning in from and what our superpower is we've got um lydia from milwaukee sewing yes i love me some crafting we've got chris from new haven staying organized <laughs> we have um lilona i think i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly from new york city saying sidewalk speed walking a true superpower. Yes, much, much appreciated. Excellent. All right. Well, we've got a good group of people here today with us, and I'm really glad you chose this time to be with us. So my name's Nicole Jones. I'm from TechSoup. I will be your host, and we've got some excellent um, content today. And today we're going to be talking about better collaboration, bigger impact, how to manage work, from anywhere with Asana, and you'll see some very friendly faces on the screen. They're going to be presenting. We're going to give introductions in just a bit, but before we get there, we're going to go over a little bit of housekeeping. All right, so using Zoom, so you probably already noticed your line is muted. So the way that you can engage with us, especially if you have questions, is by going ahead and typing them into your Q&A panel of the Zoom webinar. So you'll find the two little message bubbles that say Q&A, and that's the best place for you to drop your questions. We're gonna be taking questions at the end. So if something comes up during the presentation, you're like, hmm, I'm wondering about this and I'd like more info, please go ahead and ask it in the moment um, we'll do our best to try to get to some of these questions via chat. Otherwise, we're going to be saving we're going to be saving them toward the end. And we do have a lot of participants with us, so we might not get to answer your question live on air, but we will get a history of all the questions and do our best to follow up with you. So you can also use the chat. That's a great place, kind of like the water cooler, to have conversations with other nonprofits and sharing resources, sharing tips about Asana or anything else related to project management for your nonprofit. Also, you're gonna receive an email with the recording of this webinar. So if there's anything you might've missed or you have to pause for some reason, if you're not, you're going to get a copy of this sent to your email within about a day, um, a day to 48 hours after the webinar. And that will also include slides, so all the slides that you're seeing and any links that we reference as well. Okay, with that out of the way, a little bit about TechSoup. So we're a global network bridging tech solutions and services for good. So you might know TechSoup because of our software program, but we're much more than that. We also have support, training, community, and much more to help over 1 million nonprofits in more than 200 countries around the world. And we absolutely love to be your resource partner. We're gonna include some of our, um, our, especially our product catalog in the chat. Uh, Steven Davidson, our wonderful support from TechSoup will be including that link and other links throughout the presentation. So you'll notice some of these names here. These are our 100 plus corporate donors, not all of them reflected here, and providers of software, hardware, and services who have chosen the TechSoup platform to create and grow impactful and kind donation programs like Asana. 
uh, who will be speaking today more about how your nonprofit can take advantage of their collaboration tool. Um, but we have lots of other uh, service providers, software providers as well, and you can get the full list at get, um, techsoup.org slash get hyphen product hyphen donations. You can see our full catalog and we'll make sure to drop that in chat and include it in the post event email as well. And last thing before we get into today's content, I just want to share the special resource that we have for nonprofits. Um, we created it on TechSoup.org and it's for nonprofits impacted by COVID-19. So as I've mentioned, TechSoup's committed to equipping your nonprofit with the tech resources to support your staff. So that's why we've compiled these resources. It includes things like tools to support remote work, um, policy resources, webinars and workshops, and we're constantly updating this page. Actually, we just overhauled it and added some totally new resources. So please check it out. We're going to include that link in the chat and we'll also make sure to have it in our post event email. Okay. With that, I am super delighted to welcome today's guests. So first we have D Danny Mendoza. He is founder and CEO of the nonprofit Together We Rise. We also have Mary Atwater. She is a digital media manager for Young Survival Coalition. And then Michael Armstrong, he's the nonprofit program manager at Asana. And I am going to let Michael take it away from here. Thanks so much for being with us today. All right. Right, there we go. Hi everyone, thanks for that, Nicole. Um, before we dive right into things, let's level set on our agenda for the hour. I'll start things off with a brief introduction to the three C's of collaboration, followed by presentations by two very special nonprofit customers. Their stories are particularly special to us because they were among the first members of the Asana for Nonprofits program, making their successes especially personal for our team. Next, we'll be walking you through a demo of Asana, followed by a brief Q&A, which will wrap up today's webinar. But let's begin by addressing the elephant in the room. The world has changed. <laughs> this may be a misnomer because this elephant is one that we can't stop talking about. That's because it's fundamentally shifted the ways in which we relate and connect as people. It has impacted how we collaborate as teams, and perhaps for every organization on this call, cause us to quickly pivot to seek new ways of funding. Circumstances today are exponentially more difficult for the nonprofit sector, which even before this crisis was expected to do more with less. Except today, the system is in crisis and now more than ever, the work of this sector is of the utmost importance. That said, the nonprofit sector is no stranger to sudden change it perhaps more than any other industry knows the need to quickly pivot, shift priorities, and adjust realities when presented with new information. It's a cycle that happens often after every election. But this is an inflection point. The status quo in our way of life in the world before has been disrupted. And while the answer to this and the way we'll see ourselves through is with technology, many of us find ourselves bombarded by even more emails, are constantly interrupted by notifications. And it feels like we've moved into Zoom meetings as our new office space. Uh, by the way, special shout out goes out to everyone here that has also become a part-time teacher and daycare provider. But to succeed in this new world and under these circumstances, collaborative work is a critical need. But how are we expected to be more collaborative with shelter in place in effect and when we're feeling more isolated than ever before? I'd like to center this moment with a quote from Dustin, Asana's CEO, because it grounds us and this conversation with what true collaboration is all about. Confidence, clarity, alignment, organization. Working together in pursuit um, of goals that are larger than ourselves. With this definition of collaboration in mind, I'd like to talk about the three C's, uh, the three essential collab uh, components that unlock real collaboration. Michael, real quick, can you speak a little bit closer to the mic? It sounds like some folks are having trouble hearing. Oh, sure. I will project. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Uh, all right, the three C's. Collaboration in its simplest form can be broken down into the three C's, uh, uh, into three C's. <laughs> Communication, content, and coordination. 
Teams have invested heavily in technology solutions for the first two C's, communication and content. And as a result, interest in remote communication tools has exploded. But in many cases, teams have not invested in the third C of collaboration, that coordination layer. Without coordination, we spend more time in unnecessary meetings and reading more content, but not advancing our mission critical work. As a result, most teams have resorted to makeshift solutions to coordinate their work. The most common are meetings, slides, and spreadsheets. These solutions don't scale because they're just a snapshot in time and not a shared and dynamic plan of accountability and action. Time invested in maintaining spreadsheets to coordinate teams keeps us busy and maintains the status quo, but it doesn't empower you to scale your efforts, nor does it lead to more collaboration. Some teams have invested in traditional project management tools, but these are difficult for teams to adopt beyond professional project managers because they force users to conform to how their software defines a project lifecycle. And while suited for management roundtables, the living connection to the underlying work being done is missing. But that's why we built Asana. Asana is one of the pioneers of a new category of software called work management. Work management is all about giving teams clarity of plan, process, and responsibility. It solves the problem of team coordination and answers the question of who's doing what by when. And because Asana integrates with your communication tools like Microsoft Teams and Slack, in addition to your content solutions like Google Drive and OneDrive, Asana adds a truly collaborative layer to the spaces where your work lives and is already taking place. Asana helps coordinate the elements of work, people, plans, projects, processes, information, and content, so teams can spend their time collaborating to solve problems. Projects are time-bounded initiatives, such as fundraising campaigns, events, and IT implementations. Processes are ongoing workflows, such as design requests, volunteer training, and employee onboarding. By managing your team's work in one place, you get a single source of truth on a project progress, an essential hub for workflow processes. Reducing work about work, so you have more time to focus on the stuff that matters. From April 6 to April 15th, Asana conducted a survey called the Anatomy of Work for Remote Teams that evaluated the behaviors and attitudes of more than 5,000 full-time employees working from home. We found that employees who use a work management platform feel more supported by their manager and believe they're more productive while working remotely compared to employees who do not use a work management platform. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Danny Mendoza Together We Rise to share their story of success and how they use Asana to coordinate their work. Awesome, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us and I am happy and glad to, to share our story with Asana. Um, I believe we started using Asana in about 2011 or 2012. Um, we've grown exponentially from there. Um, uh, we're, we're a decent sized charity. We're not humongous. Um, we have about 35 staff. Um, we started using Asana when we had about um, three staff. Um, but we really started to see, you know, as we started to grow and help more and more youth is how do we keep track of everything from, you know, helping 25,000 children in one year to helping 100,000 to 300,000. And as that number continually grow, growed, how do we keep track of all that in one place? Um, we have been blessed to be able to create the largest scholarship in America for children in foster care. And being able to, to hold all that information all in one place is really what Asana has, has helped us create through that process. And uh, Michael, we can move on to the next slide. It can kind of dive a little bit deeper. Um, so for us is, you know, why Asana? Um, before we had Asana, um, I mean, it's Google spreadsheets, emails, um, Google chat, and just trying to, to put all those things in one place. Um, and a constant question was, what's going on with that project? Who's working on what? You know, why are you asking me this question if you already knew that we did it? You know, it's sending out an email and not being sure if they're going to actually do it or I sent out an email and I forgot that I sent it and that person forgot that they sent it. Um, so it, it really allowed us to, we need a, an, 
a project system and management tool to hold teams accountable. Um, so with, with Asana, we're, we're able to do that, right? I, I can assign a task to someone, and if they don't do it, then it'll follow up. Um, same with someone assign a task to me. You know, as we all go through the nonprofit world and as our organization continues to, to grow, you know, we're inundated by emails and constant emails in our, in our inbox every single day. You know, and, and I've learned that not everyone marks them unread if they don't actually uh, follow through with it at that moment. Um, and that's kind of accidental and that's something that happens. And so what we want to do is making sure that uh, we can find a place to really hold that all in one area. Um, the other thing that it helped us do was eliminate for the need of constant check-ins. Um, for me, it's something that I'm very passionate about of helping foster youth and utilizing you know, my life's work and mission to do this. Um, and so sometimes I, I feel overly passionate about something and wanting to know what is going on. And, as I've learned and I've grown and you know, continue to grow every single day is, you know, that's not always the best place for a work environment. How do you assign and trust uh, a task to someone without always having to ask questions or know what's going on? Um, before Asana, we, we didn't have that. You know, we didn't have a place to update it. We didn't have a place to get all that information. Um, now with Asana, you know, there's different features that allow you to, to check Asana before you ask someone a question. And that helps not only with the trust in your staff, but also it saves you time to, you know, consistently having to contact someone, wait for their email response back. And so that's just a, another measure of uh, success that we've used it. And, you know, and overall, as we've broken off into departments is improved cross-department communication, you know, how is everybody working together all in one place? And Michael, if you wanna go to the next slide, I can show you guys little examples. Uh, I think for us as Together We Rise as an organization, the, the first thing that was the most important piece is that everyone had to use Asana the same way that the organization uses it. Um, across different organizations, whether you guys use it, how Mary will use it, how Michael will use it, it'll vary. Um, but what, one thing I did learn is that everybody at Asana uses it the same way or understands how they all use it. Um, so we really created um, a training on Asana within our organization, how we use it. And we created templates so that everybody knows um, how each department uses it. And I think that was huge. It's like, how do you hold someone accountable if they use it differently than other people? Um, so for us, templates and speaking the language was a, a beautiful, beautiful addition to our team as we really pushed Asana. Go to the next one. Um, and I think uh, another way we really capitalized it on the management side was creating meeting agendas um, for uh, individuals. So anytime, you know, my coworker is added to a project, they also have it uh, into a meeting agenda for their tasks. So that way, if I have to go to my coworker, Lauren, and be like, hey, um, can I give you this task? Um, for me, the first thing I do is I want to look at what task she has so that I can manage her workload. I think employee bandwidth, especially when working from home, you know, you have to be mindful of that. You have to understand how much work do they have and where can you see that? Um, I've, and that's actually, as we've added staff, we've, we've used Asana to determine, okay, you know, our coworker is not finishing all these tasks and it's because they have way too much to do. And unless you're meeting with them daily, you're not gonna always know what's going on. And for us, that's what, you know, Asana and our meeting agendas for us has really provided like an overview of their workload. You know, we add how many hours we expect projects uh, to be worked on so that we can you know, time it within a week. And if it goes over that 40 hour work week, then we can kind of transition some of their tasks to another employee. Um, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from our staff um, for that, just because they're able to now see all their projects in one place. Uh, I think as an organization and as a business, you know, we, we have to remember that we are human. You know, we do make mistakes, we do forget things, we do have bad days. And if you don't have everything in one place, you know, we're going to, we're going to miss things. Things are going to fall through the holes and, and fall through the cracks and, and that's okay. Um, 
but it's always best. At least you have a place to see it all. And Michael, let's go to the next slide. Um, and for our teams on how we work with uh, different departments, um, uh, an example that we have here is uh, right now we've really stepped up in supporting college foster youth as a transition in COVID. Um, a lot of them, you know, their school shuts down. They, they can't go home because there is no home. You know, their foster parents that they lived with as they transitioned out aren't getting paid anymore. So for us, we, we created a way to, to support them and we partnered with foundations to really uh, provide some financial support. Um, however, you know, that, that is a, a mix of a bunch of different departments that are working together, right? So once we vet the student that they're actually were in foster care and they're a part of foster care program, that's one department. And then it goes over to the finance team to pay them. So what we use in Asana is, you know, you can fill out a form and there's automated tasks and automated rules that can assign tasks automatically. So once uh, one of the team members kind of fill, uh, vets the, employee, the, the student and the beneficiary receiving the money, they fill out a form and they hit submit, provide the receipt, whether it's a reimbursement or a request, and it automatically assigns it to a, a person in another department. Once that person in another department hits complete, it automatically notifies them, and then it automatically sends it to another department. And I think automated rules are, are something that is key in Asana um, to, to really kind of speed up that workflow. And I think even, even yesterday we had uh, one of our coworkers say, hey, like every time they complete it, then I have to reassign it. And you know, and as they're like, but I know we have automations that, that are in here, so what can we do? So we were able to be like, hey, like that is true, but if you create this rule, you can automatically assign it to the next person without you ever being involved. And I think that, you know, the automation side has really played a, a huge, huge role with our organization and speeding things up. Um, so I think that's something that you guys should all definitely check out as we assign um, different tasks to different departments and using that inbox to, to do it. Um, but for us, you know, it's, it's saved so much work. It's allowed us to, to not have to check in on all our staff that are working from home right now. You know, it's, it's the first step we check before contacting them, um, even after hours, you know, status updates on on Asana are, are huge, but I think overall, I think that the most important thing in Asana is that everybody knows how to use it. Um, so as you all kind of transition into it or expand into Asana, just know that there's so many great tools out there, but if you guys are not investing in the Asana training that they have to teach your staff everything they need to know about Asana, you won't be able to maximize it. And, and for us, as an organization, we now include as part of our hiring a uh, one to two day training um, with a test at the end of the week so that we know that they're ready to use the tools to succeed in our organization. Um, so with that, I mean, I'll, I'll end on that note, but I appreciate, you know, Asana and everyone on here that's, that's trying to, to do better because when we use Asana and do it right, it honestly improves the, the quality of life for our staff, for our team members. And you know, at the end of the day, we're all going through a hard time right now. And if we can make their jobs easier through organization, I, I think that's honestly, it's beautiful. Perfect. Thanks, Danny. All right, with that, introduce uh, Mary Atwater at Young Survival Coalition. Let me unmute myself because I always forget to do that before I start talking. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to Michael and Asana for the invitation. I love Asana. It's done wonders for our organization and selfishly for my mental health. Um, you know, primarily focusing, we'll be talking about burnout and communication. So the too long, didn't read version of what Young Survival uh, Coalition is, YSC, is that YSC is here to serve young adults who are diagnosed with breast cancer. Young adults being 40 and under-ish, we joke that we say we don't card people, but um, with young adults, there tends to be unique needs um, and very specific needs. When it comes to a uh, breast cancer diagnosis, you know, they're usually 
um, just starting families, haven't even thought of families because they're just starting their careers, um, don't know what they're doing, and all of a sudden, bam, you know, in the middle of dating, and then bam, hit with a breast cancer diagnosis. What do you do? So we are here to provide support and resources to help them understand their diagnosis and make the right treatment decisions for themselves and based on their situation, as well as get them connected with other young adults uh, who are diagnosed in the same shoes. So that way they can ask the questions that they need. They can get the support that they need. Um, pre uh, coronavirus dumpster fire days we had in person as well as um, virtual hangouts just based on everyone's comfort. Now, right now, all of our stuff is done online. Um, our biggest summit, is, our biggest program is our summit, the three-day program where we offer sessions about um, the latest medical information, so clinical trials, research, et cetera, as well as the unique needs similar to what I mentioned um, about dating and cancer, managing uh, all of the different side effects that come with breast cancer diagnosis and treatment. Um, unfortunately, this year, again, Corona, dumpster fire, our summit was uh, postponed, and then we actually, so we're having summit in Los Angeles 2.0 comes 2021, and I will briefly talk about, you know, what we did help with Asana, making sure that we transfer some of the content from 2020 over to 21, but Michael, hit that next slide. So, wanting to talk about why Asana. So, before we really had all organization buy-in and everyone on Asana. It was very much of our team, the departments were all in their own silos. They used their own methods, own forms of communication. You know, there were Excel documents on Excel documents of different versions and different formats and things were lost. Um, Marcom, we used Asana for our own, managing our different vendors. Um, and a lot of the times before Asana, it was, Marcom was in the middle, everyone came to us, all the requests, and so ended up causing a lot of burnout. I will be the first to admit that I was what you would call a rabid raccoon in the corner. I was not nice to work with. Um, so Asana kind of helped uh, hit, take a little time out, hit the brakes. So what I'm going to talk about is how we combated this burnout. Um, we improved our communication process and flow, so that way it allowed us as an organization, as well as individuals, the opportunity to focus on what we do and why we do and manage all the, the requests that are coming in, especially to Marcom. Um, we also, how we streamlined our processes to one, help communicate how things are done and help get the buy-in and support from other developments and making sure things fall through the cracks because I will again speak for myself, there are a lot of times my creative monkey brain is wonderful for creating creative stuff, but not so great of remembering something that you said 30 seconds ago. So with that, let's get into combating uh, burnout. So one of the issues that we were having is, a lot of, I don't know if other Marcom teams have feel this, but sometimes people think that marketing has that magic staples button of this, so that was easy. You know, they send it out a request saying, hey, I want an email. Can you get it in an hour? So, which is also one very frustrating. And then we didn't really have the opportunity to kind of hit pause and allow us to communicate that, hey, we need more than an hour to get an email written and all these different steps. This is how it's done. It was more that we silently endured the pain and then got frustrated, got exhausted, Rabid Raccoon comes out, not very happy, not our best work. So by creating, you can see on the left, I know it's a little blurry, lo siento, but, um, you know, leadership requests, got to stick with them. But uh, we created a template where it allows us to break down the, okay, so you have an idea of, a, of the email. It doesn't, you can't just send us the copy. We throw it in email, just send it out. So we show the steps of this is what it takes to get an email done. This is the time. So actually we need about a week and this is why. So this really allowed us to communicate time and bandwidth. And also it made it easier for us to ask for help instead of taking on all of it and trying to just do it ourselves and, you know, silently suffer in the corner while, you know, while not properly having the communication we were able to say, hey, can you help with this? All right, great, you have an email that tight turnaround. Can you write the first draft? 
That way, when we have, and we will clearly identify who's editing them. Then that way, again, if things fall through the cracks or someone didn't review, we can easily follow up. Um, and then also effectively communicate with leadership, which is the most important aspect because nonprofit world, dumpster fire life that we're living in, things change all the time. Priorities shift, there's things within a project shift. So by us, this is the one on the right is an overview of what our MARCOM calendar looks like for our fiscal year. So we are able to give our leadership a really in-depth view of what campaigns are happening, what launches are happening. In the past, we would use a Google Sheet or an Excel doc, which was great, but it didn't allow us to create all, put all the information that our leadership needed, so it would require an additional doc or an email, So, in, which is not ideal when talking to leadership because leadership needs tiny bites, tell me what you need, tell me how to fix it, what do you need my help, move on, go. So it made it a little different when you have all these moving pieces. So by having this overview, when a new project would come up, we could easily direct them to this calendar. We would say, okay, if this is important, what gets bumped? What, uh, what campaign can we bump? What campaign can we move? Where is the flexibility? Because we can't do all of this. So it really helped us create that balance and say goodbye to rabid raccoon Mary. So next slide, well, we were with similar to I showed with the um, email template, we were able to create various templates. So then, because in the past, all requests, whether it was a design, web related, social, you name it, it was going primarily through me. A lot of the, as our team grew, as new members came on, more and more and more, it ended up being all of our processes lived in my brain, which is not a great thing, as I said, monkey brain. Um, so we were able to create social requests and templates. So that way, one, we are encouraging our coworkers to get involved with the process, um, as well as hey, saying, hey, these are the, you create those boundaries in the sense of this is what I need from you. If you need the social post to go out, this is the information please get that for me. And so then if someone doesn't fully complete it, I can easily follow up and say, hey, push them to get a little more information. Um, and so that's what you see on the left and on the right, um, really encouraging people to get involved into our content development. This, I know it's again a little blurry, but this is what our calendar looks like for October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This also is a way, you, we use this as a way to educate because you know, non-marketing -market, people don't realize that you're not supposed to send 10 emails on one day to our constituents. So we are able to educate them on facing it out and easily say, hey, this is nothing personal. I know that this is important. Could we move this to Thursday? Because we have two emails going out here, as you can see. So it allows us to create this no, you know, take the emotion in a sense of like, it's nothing personal. This is what we can easily educate you on what the situation is. Um, so it really helps create that again, streamline things so that way I'm not chasing after people try to get information. They're not having to chase after me to make sure things that, that make sure that I saw what they were doing, what they needed. And so it makes everyone happy um, and everyone kind of on the same page. And then the last slide, we'll be talking about um, the accountability. So again, making sure things don't fall through the cracks. So on the on the left, we, what, what we really created, and so I saw some people in the chat talking about the struggle with the nonprofits and how there's not a lot of buy-in. There's not, they don't know what to do. So one of the things that we did, we being Marcom, is we always said the fix your house first before moving to others. And so we really internally created accountabilities with each other. So my manager can go in and she can see, oh, oh, Mary has 20 tasks coming up. Okay, I going to take, what can I take away? What can I take? The same with my the associates. Our team is super close to where we are very comfortable and very open. And, you know, my associates are very comfortable to be like, yo, uh, you're overdue on five tasks that you need to get to me. What up? Get those over. So we have this accountability system and ensuring that no matter how tiny the task, we're able to not forget about it and it, we're able to get it done. 
um, because you know this is an example of our blog. Our blog requires a lot of little things, and it also allows us to create padding. So if we have a coworker or an external writer for our blog that wants to do something, it allows us to make sure each step is done, and we're giving each team member the enough time to where they're not rushing to try to get it up just for the sake of getting it up. Because again, we want to have quality content to our constituents to help them get what they need. Um, and so with so that we have the internal and then also our cross uh, cross department collaboration. As I mentioned before, it used to be that everyone went through Marcom to get stuff done and which is not ideal, very exhausting and it adds a lot of work. So this is this one over here is for our summit. It is our largest event. It is the one event that every single person in our organization has touch points on. So this really gave us, working with Asana gave us an opportunity to one, take all the documents that are squirreled away by each department, putting all this, their tasks in one place so then it's very clear. It allows us to make sure that development can communicate with Marcom talking about these are the sponsors that need to go where, these are the things that we need, as well as development talking with programs to talk about what partner partnerships can be worked into the three days without it feeling too sponsory and, you know, because we want to ensure that it is very our community first during those three days. And again, us working with, with programs about what they need. So it allows us to all have accountability with each other, improve our communication. And with COVID, you know, since things had to get shifted over, um, slash I would just say year over year regardless, we are a, this is an example of a template that we create for our events. So again, this allows us for those tiny little details that pop up during, we're able to remember for the following year what came up so and ask ourselves if we need that again, was that only a one-off thing for that year? Um, and now the current Summit 2020 uh, task, or I'm sorry, project, we're able to go through and we can mark things that can be used that are already done, like pat ourselves on the back, we're on top of it, as well as identify what tasks have to be redone. So very sad, all of our design stuff has to be redone. Um, but there's other things that could be salvaged. Some of our um, designs can be salvaged. So helping us identify going through the menial tasks um, while staying sane. So yeah, happy, you know, not rabid raccoons and just happy over here. Thanks to Asana. <laughs> I love that. Thanks for sharing. Um, so I think we uh, mentioned it in the chat, but um, in, uh, we want to make use of the fact that we've got um, everyone here today and um, there's a lot of questions in chat. So why don't we, um, we're going to skip the demo, know that we're going to be sending a follow up email to everybody uh, who registered for the webinar with a link to this demo. So you'll be able to see Asana in action. Um, so with that, I want to make sure that um, you know, you've heard from a couple of nonprofits about uh, how they've used Asana and um, how Asana has helped their organizations. So before we open it up to the Q&A section, I wanted to share how Asana is making our services uh, more accessible for nonprofits. Eligible uh, nonprofit organizations can apply for a 50% off annual uh, Asana premium or business subscription through TechSoup via the links we have available on screen. We're also going to be following uh, this webinar with the, um, the slide deck, so you'll be able to access it if you don't uh, write it down uh, right now. Um, but also because we know that change is hard um, and every organization that joins our program will also have access to the Asana Advisors program, where you can schedule a free one hour uh, consultation session uh, with an Asana employee to help your team get the most out of Asana. So with that, I'm going to pass it on over to Nicole to facilitate um, our Q&A. Great. Excellent. So many good questions already. Thank you for sending those in. Um, thank you to Mary, Danny, and Michael. So I think first, just to address, uh, I've seen some comments about the slides being blurry. I think there's just a lot of detail within the slides that makes it e 
hard to expand on it. So as Michael mentioned, we will be sharing a copy of the slide. So you'll get to zoom in. I think some things are also like blurred out or um, uh, I should say like darkened to not reveal names and things like that, but just to give you a general idea of what it looks like in action. But anyway, it'll help when you can see it and zoom into that. So apologies that during the actual uh, live presentation right now, it's been, it's been difficult to clearly see them. So with that, um, it is Q&A time. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, we have a lot of people on the line, so we're gonna do our best to get to as many questions as we can. And we're gonna kick things off with this question um, that I love from Eric, and it's Oh no. Uh oh. All right. Well, till she gets back, why don't I kick this off with uh, a question <laughs> I'd like to um, know from both Mary and Danny. Um, what was your aha moment uh, when using Asana? Um, when did you see it in action where it made sense and you immediately saw that benefit? If you could share that until Nicole gets back. I mean, for me, I, I would say that um, I'm very much, again, things living in my brain, and I was very much, I would squirrel things to keep them to myself. So my aha moment was the moment of actually ask, like actually being able to ask for help and work as a team and being able to say, okay, I can, I can give this to someone and I know they'll be fine. If they have any questions, they know where to find me. So it was that aha of the, this brain has too much going on as it is, I can actually use Asana for that one less thing to use my brain for. So that's great. Danny? Um, I think for me, it, it started really with, um, I was uh, infamous for having sticky notes all over my desk. And, and one thing I would do before I left the day, I, I would take a picture of all the sticky notes and all in one place. And then, you know, people would ask me questions later in the day and like, it's, it's, on, it's on my sticky notes or I didn't get that part of the picture. So it, it started to that, to that level and then being able to, to really not having to ask my coworkers questions about what's going on all the time that I could just look. Um, I think that that was like a no brainer for me. I mean, it was just simple, right? It's, you can access it anywhere. Yeah. And maybe for me as an Asana employee, like the first moment it really clicked for me was no longer uh, waking up uh, in a panic, uh, thinking that I forgot to do something, uh, that it was all in one place. I had a notification of a task I had to do. It was in my my task. It was assigned to me on that day. So it even brought me an Asana employee uh, clarity in my work. So that was my aha moment. No more stress. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Cole. Thank you. Yes, Zoom moment. Hello. Um, the reality we're living in. So sorry about that, but uh, thanks for taking it away, Michael. So where we left off, actually, I'm going to summarize a question that I've seen come up a lot, and it's about how do you get your team on board with this? What tips and tricks do you have in your personal experience to get your team members on board? I think for, for Together We Rise, um, we initially started uh, with the Asana Academy. Um, so that's something I didn't even know existed. I, I, you know, I had the, the privilege to, to go to the Asana headquarters and I'm like, we, we just need training. We need videos. And they're like, we have an Asana Academy. And I was like, what? And so instantly when we got back home, you know, we made sure that all of our managers uh, took all those classes. Um, and it was, it was a mandatory thing. I mean, it wasn't a popular thing. I'm not going to say that everybody jumped on board. Um, I think technology is just hard. No matter what platform you use, trying to learn something new, it's so hard for anyone, right? So for us, it's utilizing that free resource and making it a mandatory thing for our staff. They were given like a month to do it. Um, they could do it within work hours. It was just like, you have to do this so that we know that you have an understanding of what it is. I think also at that time, it's not going to happen overnight. It will take a time um, 
very fortunate that one of our associates who, again, she's also kind of the, my right side brain and if my right side was a body, it'd be her. Um, she really dedicated and she was there to ask, to walk people through. She created templates for them to practice. Um, and just knowing that the first couple that they start to work in aren't going to be necessarily what you, how you do it. And it's totally fine. And eventually they'll slowly start to get the groove and you'll slowly start to understand how each person uses a sauna. And it's so I think that's the number one thing is it's not happening overnight. Don't try to have everyone jump in immediately, just little by little. Yeah. And I'd like to add one thing. I think, um, the Asana team really suggested is to have an Asana champion. Um, so point someone out in your team that says, hey, you are the resource for all questions. And so uh, we were blessed with one of our coworkers, Crystal, who is our Asana champion, but she is the, the lifeline behind Asana and, and people refer all questions to her. If there's an issue, you know, we send Crystal and, and Crystal then is, is blessed to have, you know, a consultant over at Asana. And his name is Dave and Dave is, is a huge part of our organization. And we just meet once a month for one hour. Right. But he helps identify all these things that he sees within other nonprofits to our Asana champion. And then our Asana champion then is able to be that resource. Cause it's, it's so frustrating when you don't know who to ask. Yeah. Shout out to Dave, who is an Asana advisor. <laughs> um, I think uh, you point out something really important. It takes a village, right? You need an adoption and a, uh, alliance. Um, and to help that, because we know this is a, a process, right? It doesn't happen overnight. We have daily trainings on Asana basics, Asana intermediate, but we also have um, a training webinar for how to get your team to adopt Asana. And this is where you get to learn, um, you know, the basics of change management that we've seen be super effective. And uh, we empower you all with those tools. So we're partners uh, in this journey. That's why we have the advisor program. Uh, also to follow up on what Danny noted about the um, uh, Asana Academy is we're also gonna be releasing um, in the very near future, stay tuned, uh, six Asana Academy courses that are going to be focused on nonprofit specific workflows from uh, digital fundraising campaigns to uh, volunteer onboarding, um, uh, vo uh, fundraising event templates that we have available, um, two that are going to be released, but we have new courses um, dedicated to those needs. So thanks for bringing that up, Denny. Just want to call out this comment from Molly that uh, she loves the idea of the Asana champion, and that's going to be her new superpower. Yeah. Power. <laughs> that's power. <laughs> Big time. Great. All right. Let's move to another question here. So I've also seen this one come up in several different forms, but it's about how to work with volunteers or just external collaborators um, for day-to-day -day operations, major projects. What access do they have to Asana? And how do you get them set up? I love that. Um, I can hop in. I don't know if um, either of you work with volunteers, but um, at Asana, if you upgrade at a um, organization level, then anyone that you uh, invite to a space um, it does not count as a member of your plan. They count as a free guest. So again, that's for uh, free organ uh, for premium organizations. Um, and that allows you to onboard volunteers who are then able to use and stay up to date uh, with tasks that are assigned to them. Uh, you can onboard your volunteers with Asana uh, without any additional cost to you and your organization. Um, another thing to call out is permissions are built based off of where folks are invited to. So if you want to have uh, a specific team in your organization that is just for volunteer a specific work, um, you make that you invite them to uh, that particular team and volunteers will only see what, uh, what is public within that team. If you want to scale it down to just a, a handful of projects that um, they're directly going to be working in, then you just invite them to those projects because uh, they have visibility into spaces downstream of where they've been invited. So really it depends on how you want to engage with your volunteers, how much um, activity you want them to have in Asana, but uh, Asana allows 
allows uh, seamless uh, collaboration and coordination with volunteers. Uh, also shout out to our mobile app and the mobile app team that make um, coordinating with volunteers who are not working in your office, but remotely out in the field, um, be able to stay up to date with what they need to do and be aware of, um, just like that. Thanks. I can also jump, just say with our event, so it kind of also goes two ways for us of working with our vendors. So we have our web contractor and our uh, design contractor. We have, diff we actually, that's how Marcom first joined in on using Asana with communicating with them. It also allows us that they are in their own projects as well as invited to some of our projects, but primarily to protect them so they are not receiving a ton of requests from various different people. We streamline that process um, to make sure that their workload is just as balanced as ours because yeah it, it, we want to make sure that they're happy and not burnt out so they can also help you know with us so it definitely goes a two way it's not just having to worry about who are coming in but also the going out okay. any anything else to add to that or we can move on another question so another question that I've seen come up quite a bit is around comparing Asana to, there's a milieu of other project management tools out there, maybe talking a little bit about some of the differences between some, some other project management tools and what sets Asana aside. Well, I think the most important thing about Asana is it's an um, engaging, interactive, centralized uh, space that serves as that single source of truth. But uh, the most important thing is the sense of um, accountability and um, knowing who's doing what by when and having coordination built around that core component um, that makes Asana uh, dynamic and able for folks to have true clarity around um, when uh, projects need to be completed by. Um, so I think it makes it, uh, you know, slightly smarter, um, well, more effective than a slightly smarter spreadsheet or any other kind of um, platform. I don't know if uh, Danny or Mary, you've had experiences with um, with other project management tools and how they compare. I mean, we have, but I think for us, it's uh, Asana has also helped us to still use spreadsheets, right, and still use those other programs, but putting them all in one place. And I think with the, the APIs and the integrations and the different things, you can still use a lot of what you're doing, but just having it all in one place has been super helpful. Um, so for me, you know, to be able to not have to worry about deleting spreadsheets, but being able to integrate it directly into a sauna so seamlessly, like, that's just so helpful for us. Yeah, and even just being able to find details, um, we use for a couple other um, external vendors, we use Basecamp, which was great in the moment, you know, when we're worked, but also not, I mean, I don't want to be negative, Nancy, but it, it just made it very difficult if we had to bring our leadership up to speed on something, or if we had to find one, there wasn't a way to create the, these other tasks that we are agreed upon after this meeting. It was very much having to print out all of the communications that were in base camp, go through, highlight, just to figure out what things were falling through the cracks. Um, and it also was a little challenging of getting that buy-in from staff, whereas Asana was, is a little more friendlier. Um, and you can direct them to one space, like, hey, this is where I need you, versus Basecamp wasn't very helpful. And uh, in addition to that, I think um, what um, everyone on this call is going to see with the follow-up message uh, with the demo is, a project um, doesn't need to be seen only in one way, right? Uh, I love lists. I know people love checking off lists. Other people are visual people. Um, uh, so it depends on whether or not you want to see your project in a list view, in um, a board view, um, you know, like some competitors have that. Uh, the timeline view for specific uh, deadline driven projects is super helpful. You saw snapshots of that work um, in uh, both Danny and Mary's presentations calendar. So I think um, what Asana does is really centralize all of that information in one place and um, provides and empowers the sense of um, 
how each person wants to view their project uh, and what works best for them because not everyone is the same. Excellent. Thanks for those answers. So, you know, I do want to look at just the discount program. There's been a lot of questions about that. So I'm going to Go ahead and share my screen. I shared this link out in chat already, but I'm going to add it again. And it's more information about the discounted rates available for nonprofits um, for Asana. So, uh, oops, here we go. So, Offer provides a 50% discount on annual subscription to either premium or business for one team. Uh, and once you request this offer through TechSoup, you'll pay Asana directly for the subscription. So just included this with more details and you can click off to um, just making sure eligibility and all those things um, are, are, you're in the know about it. So just wanted to include that. Anything else to mention, Michael, on the offer? Um, well, I just wanted to call out, you know, like that link is great. Um, if folks uh, also visit asana.com backslash nonprofits, uh, they'll be taken to an overview of everything that we have available from the discount to the Asana advisor program. And I really want to um, highlight the nonprofit customer case studies that we have available. Um, both y uh, Young Survival Coalition and Together We Rise have uh, really incredible um, customer case studies that we have highlighted on um, the page there. If you scroll all the way down, we've got a, a carousel um, where they're in very good company. Uh, we'll be including these case studies um, in our follow-up email, but um, if folks want to learn more about the program, other nonprofits that are currently using Asana and have seen success, um, take a look at the website. And um, once you're convinced, uh, if you go up to the top and select the country that you're registered in, um, for many of us here, United States, you can check, not sure if I qualify to check our eligibility requirements. And once you know that you can apply, then you just click learn more and that'll take you to the TechSoup page that uh, Nicole shared um, previously. Awesome, great. So, you know, let's see, I think we've got time for one more question before we wrap here. Again, thank you everyone for your questions. We didn't get to uh, answer your question. We will have a transcript and we will do our best to, to follow up. Um, but these are good resources in the meantime to see if you can try to find the information that you're looking for. Okay, so let's just take this last question here. Let me pull it up. Where did it hide and run off to? Aha. Uh, before you start that question, if I can just note out, if we don't aren't able to answer your questions here, uh, you could always head to uh, Asana's community forum and pose those questions. The entire Asana nonprofit team uh, is there and we're excited to answer any questions that you have. So this is an ongoing dynamic conversation. Um, we're here to help. All right. Back Love that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's awesome. Yeah. Look, use the power of community to get your to get your questions answered. So let's just do this last one. Uh, maybe just if someone could speak briefly about security of data entered into Asana, maybe specifically as it relates to financial account data. What kind of protections are in place there? Um, I can't say that I'm a security expert, <laughs> but, but I can um, share uh, some uh, documentation that we have in place um, in the chat uh, that speaks specific to that. Um, also, you know, I'm not sure if uh, you would have your financial data within Asana or a specific um, cloud content um, storage device that uh, we would integrate with. Uh, there, Aaron's uh, shared it uh, in the chat. Um, but yeah. Great. Thank you for that. And that concludes our Q&A. So once again, use the forums. It's a great place to get um, questions. Uh, questions answered and we'll also look at the transcript and do our best to get to as many folks. Uh, a reminder that the slides and the recording of this webinar will be shared with everyone who's registered. So you will get that in an email 24 to 48 hours later. So you can go back at your leisure. Yeah. And with that, it's been such a delight having you, Danny, Mary, Michael. Thank you so much for sharing how Asana has helped your nonprofit. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. Thank you. And we'll, and we'll just close out uh, to inform you of some other upcoming virtual events that we have going on at TechSoup. 
So next week we have one on how to create a culture of wellness at your nonprofit. This is going to be fantastic. The author of The Waking Hour will be giving some tips, especially in this virtual climate, remote distributed team climate that we're living in. Stay tuned for that one. Um, we also have a phenomenal panel on tech for good using map-based apps to connect us during a pandemic. We'll be doing that in partnership with Mapbox. So you're going to see some really cool cutting edge solutions that are helping to um, diminish the impact of COVID-19. And then in August, we have one with Amazon, with AWS specifically, um, on how to access your desktop anywhere, anytime with Amazon Workspaces. So you can check out our complete lineup at techsoup.org slash community hyphen events. And that's where you'll find all of our past events with replays, transcripts, and more. So let's say goodbye. It's been always a delight having you here, our community here, uh, to learn more about how we can serve our nonprofits better. Thanks again, and you'll get a post-event survey once you X out of Zoom. Please take some time. That helps us prepare for future webinars. Thanks again, Asana team and our nonprofit community. We'll see you around. Stay safe. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.